My love of being a medical assistant to help people both domestically and internationally is a direct result of the impact the legacy of John McRae had on me. Yeah, he's a big reason why we serve, why we need to be there to heal the wounds of those who have fallen. Or who are in need. John McRae was born and raised in Guelph, Ontario, where his family engendered his foundation for a life of service. Hard work, service to others, uh, a respect for learning and the value of education, and also a strong religious faith. They were Presbyterians, which underpinned their life. He went to Central Public School and to the local high school, Guelph Collegiate Institute. And when he was uh, there at the Institute, he belonged to the Highland Cadets and actually won a gold medal for being the dr best drilled cadet in all of Ontario. He was the first student from Guelph to win a scholarship to the University of Toronto where he took two degrees. The second was medicine. He was involved in the varsity rugby team and he also sang on the varsity glee club. All the while, while he was at UT, he was writing uh, poetry and short stories as well. I think he, his career got off to a flying start because he did so well as a medical student. He did some internships. He did one at Johns Hopkins University and that's where he met Dr. William Osler. And became actually a good friend of Sir William Osler and his wife. And uh, Osler greatly influenced John in his future life and he graduated top student in his year, also winning a scholarship in pathology, which he took up at McGill University. Hardly had he done so in 1899 when Great Britain and the Boer Republics declared war in South Africa. So he had his fellowship um, postponed and then went off to serve in the Boer War. In 1901 he returned to Canada and resumed his medical career in Montreal where he remained until 1914. John McRae was an outstanding physician, he was a great poet and he was a great military medical officer and a soldier who exemplified self-sacrifice, devotion to duty. Dr. McRae was a very intelligent individual and was dedicated to his passions, medicine, the military, and his writings. So when he returned from the Boer War, uh, he then got jumped right into uh, life in Montreal and uh, completed his, his fellowship in pathology and then uh, was a pathologist at the Royal Vic Hospital, the Montreal Hospital, and he was a lecturer at McGill University. He was expedition doctor for um, Earl Grey's trip who was trying to determine whether there could be a passage from Hudson Bay to the, to the west. He was a storyteller and I think uh, uh, it was said that if John McRae was sitting around your dinner table, you had a successful dinner table because he was able to make everybody so uh, comfortable. And Earl Grey wrote to John McRae after the trip that uh, for every mile that they traveled, he had a story. All this time writing now uh, medical articles, medical papers, articles for textbooks, uh, especially Osler's Modern Medicine, and he also then of course co-authored his textbook for students for pathology. And when war was declared in August 1914, he was on his way to Europe on holiday. He was 41 years of age and knew about the reality of what this new war would be like. And he was one of the first to enroll when volunteers were called for in the First World War. And just serving as a part-time soldier, as a reservist in the militia in those days, in itself was a tremendous sacrifice. It meant giving up potentially everything you love to serve, spend lots of your time and risk your life serving the country in the defense of others. He went with them with the first contingent of Canadian troops across to Britain in October 1914, continued on with them to France in February 1915, and was with them in active service through the battles of Neuve Chapelle, the Second Battle of Ypres. He suffered horrific casualties in his unit during the Second Battle of Ypres, where he saw tremendous suffering, yet he saved many, many lives. And it was on May the 2nd, 1915, a shell uh, killed Alexis Helmer and wounded um, Owen Haig. And these two young gentlemen, very popular in the brigade, were probably the direct inspiration for McCray writing the poem in Flanders Fields. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row. He mobilized the English language to inspire his contemporaries 
and a whole generation of clinicians and a whole generation of members of the armed forces and the public in the entire English-speaking world to remember the sacrifices of the soldiers who fought in the war. Had such a great influence on people and of course is still inseparable from memories of war and our remembrance of those who've paid the supreme sacrifice. It's so long-lasting in tradition with Canada. It's on our $10 bill. We wear the poppies because of this poem. Uh, it's so well known in, in all of Europe and, and they'll recite it on Remembrance Day as well. He suddenly became ill. After a few days, he was transferred to number 14 British Hospital for Officers at Vimera. But unfortunately, although everything was done possible to help him, he died on the 28th of January 1918. Just before he died, he was um, promoted to the rank of full colonel and given um, the posting of consulting physician to the British armies in the field. To have been chosen as the first Canadian to be a consulting physician to the British armies in the field is an indication of his distinction as a medical practitioner. Canadian Medical Hall of Fame laureate, Dr. John McRae.